asistente del, de gobierno, el principal asistente de gobierno, y es el CEO de Hessel and Bernice Enterprises. Es el principal partner, es el, el socio principal de TEDA Global Agricultural Service. Eh, así es de que, bueno, tiene toda una experiencia en el sector agrícola. Es invitado especial el día de hoy por Concanaco y también por Olufemi, que es eh, eh, de Hattitude Consultants. Entonces, pues aprovechemos su presencia el día de hoy. Eh, si hay personas aquí en, en la audiencia que tienen experiencia en el sector agrícola, si ya hay productores ag agrícolas en México, pues es, es uno de los principales eh, su, su uno de sus principales, aparte del turismo, la, de las principales industrias, exportaciones, también la agricultura. Entonces, entonces hay que aprovechar que en Nigeria, siendo también uno de los países más importantes en agricultura, pues está a, ahora dos, dos personas especialistas hablándonos sobre este sector. Eh, nos están diciendo, o sea, también vamos a escuchar un poco sobre su su trayectoria, pero aparte de cómo el sector agrícola está en estos momentos, en estos momentos de crisis, lo cual ha abierto muchas oportunidades a otros países en, en involucrarse en el sector agrícola en, en Nigeria. Nigeria tiene actualmente el 50% del total del terreno cultivable, se aprovecha en la, la agricultura, lo cual lo hace uno de los países más importantes en GDP, por, por este sector. El 60% de la población económicamente activa se aprovecha en, en la agricultura. Es decir, este año representó el 33.4% y los principales productos que ellos exportan al mundo es el cacao, la yuca, el aceite de palma, el maíz, el arroz, la papa. Entonces, si sí, tenemos en, en la audiencia productores de aceite, de, eh, de maíz, de arroz, que puedan, aparte también, porque pueden eh, en este momento exportar, eh, eh, por el, este tiempo de crisis, Nigeria ah, ha necesitado también de importación de algunos de estos productos, como del maíz, del arroz, aparte de que ellos han sido uno de los principales productores en este momento de crisis, necesitan estos productos también. Entonces, pues, abre una oportunidad no nada más para México, sino para otros países para involucrarse en la exportación de estos productos. También en la importación, si ustedes también este, quieren aprovechar, este, se puede hacer la importación de esto. Actualmente Nigeria importa arroz, pescado congelado y maíz. Eh, el gobierno pretende en ese momento reinvertir, por lo menos es, en algunas de las exportaciones, para eh, sustentar las necesidades que existen en el país. También existen oportunidades en el sector de alimentos procesados, como el aceite y las grasas vegetales, que actualmente es tan importante. Eh, Dicho sector en este momento enfrenta una serie de retos para conseguir aumentar la producción, pero también para la logística. El hecho de eh, tener lugares en donde puedan um, establecer eh, todo los, lo, lo que es la yuca, el aceite de palma, necesitan logística, necesitan infraestructura, de que otros países puedan aprovechar e invertir en esto, eh, viendo el potencial que tiene Nigeria en en este sector, pues es fácil, o bueno, no es fácil, sino al momento de invertir van a haber generado su, 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 el retorno de inversión, pues realmente garantizable. Eh, y en este caso, la, la empresa de Olufemi, que es Hattitude eh, Consultants, y también la empresa del señor Mr. Toasting, pues están abiertos también para apoyar en estos, en estos negocios. Entonces, pues bueno, ya les di un, una introducción de cómo está la situación en este momento de crisis en Nigeria, las oportunidades para nosotros como mexicanos en establecerse, en invertir en Nigeria, pero también para la exportación. Entonces, les voy a, les voy a hacer la palabra a Olufemi y a Mr. Tosin para que nos hagan esta presentación. Y por favor, si tienen dudas, eh, eh, háganlas por el chat. Yo voy a tratar de de aclararlas en español. La presentación va a ser en inglés, pero bueno, ya les dije un poco acerca de lo que se va a hablar en, en la presentación para las personas que, 
que este, no lo puedan seguir en, en inglés. Y para las personas que lo sigan en inglés, pues también pueden interrumpir en cualquier momento, mandarnos una, mandarnos una pregunta o una consulta y con gusto hago las respuestas de esto. Um, Mr. Olufemi, I gave a background about your consultancy, about your personal professional life, and also about Mr. Tosinder. We really appreciate your your presence today and uh, that you are helping us to, to deliver this webinar. Olufemi, thank you very much for your presence, and Mr. Tosin, thank you so much for for giving us this time today uh, and thank give you us the much. space also for, for this presentation. We already talked about your consultancy as well and your consultancy, Olufemi, that, we, that you both are open for uh, helping people in, in Mexico also to export and also to import uh, at this moment. I, I also comment about your, about the need the, after the post-COVID, sorry, uh, post-COVID, the, well, the, the needs are in terms of agricultural uh, infrastructure and log logistics. The, I think there is the need now from other countries to invest in, in your country and, and the guarantee of succeed is going to be there. So I, I give you the, the audience and you guys are ready to talk. Thank you for being here. Okay, thank you very much, Alma. Thank you for the beautiful introduction and um, the insight that you have given about uh, our background and um, what we do. Thank you very much. Once again, I thank everyone. Um, we appreciate you um, having us to come around to share from our own experience, um, especially as we get um, our Nigeria and um, agriculture particularly. So like Ama already said, um, today we'll be talking about um, the outlook for the agricultural sector in the Nigerian economy um, post-COVID-19 and um, of course currently as it is. Um, for this um, presentation, um, like Ama already mentioned, I would start and I would um, give my presentation. Then later on I will hand over to my colleague, Mr. Tosin Ademoywa, who is on the call as well and then he will um, give his presentation, after which I will then wrap up. Perfect. Okay. So basically for today, um, we're looking at um, um, five um, segments for, for this uh, presentation, um, or rather five um, areas I'll be talking on. Um, majorly, we'll be speaking on the background of agriculture in Nigeria. Uh, we'll go on to talk about the challenges and opportunities. Um, we will also look at um, the implications, especially as the pandemic is still very much around. And um, of course, um, I'll hand over to my colleague, Mr. Uh, Tosia Ademewa, who will shed more light on um, the Nigerian government's agricultural policies and um, especially some, some of the incentives that um, you may want to look at as foreign businesses, um, as investors who might be interested in the Nigerian agricultural sector. And finally, how will them wrap up? And then we can then take um, questions if there are any. I hope I'm audible enough. All right, so we'll talk about um, agriculture in Nigeria. Um, in Nigeria, prior to independence, agriculture used to be the mainstay of Nigeria's economy. Um, it was so much important that um, virtually everybody in Nigeria were involved in agriculture in one way or the other. Um, it actually accounted for about 70% of the labor force at some point because we have a lot of um, subsistence of um, food supply. Um, some of these peasant farmers, when they are able to um, sustain food production, food supply for their families, they then are able to sell what is left behind. In the same vein, they were able to get inputs and raw materials for some manufacturing sector who make use of some agricultural produce as their inputs and raw materials. So it was a, it was a period that um, um, manufacturing sector that were making use of inputs from the agricultural sector were able to thrive. Um, we also had a lot of revenues that were accruing 
from some of the cash crops that were available then. Um, particularly, Nigeria had palm oil, we had rubber, we had cocoa, and it was the time that we were talking about the Grand North Pyramids because we were exporting a lot of this in large quantities, over 65% of the entire um, revenues of, of the entire foreign earnings of the federal government as of that time. Um, afterwards, when after independence, we actually discovered oil around um, 57, 58, 1957, 58. And 10 years or thereabout after, there was the oil boom, or what we call the oil boom, um, which as a result led to um, some kind of distraction. And then there was some level of departure from agriculture. And we had a number of um, peasant farmers leaving the rural areas, moving to the urban areas, embracing white collar jobs. And the revenues that were being that were accruing from agriculture um, started reducing. Um, there was a lot of focus on the oil because uh, most of the um, oil companies, oil producing companies in that era, especially around 1970, they were generating a lot of FX and they were using that to develop their countries. And a lot of focus was made on, uh, on that um, particular sector. That affected the agricultural production in Nigeria. And um, at some point, around the mid-70s, realized that if we are not careful, there may not be sufficient food supply even within the local um, consumption space, as against even being able to export. This led to the government of the day um, taking um, certain steps to ensure they actually curb this and there were some level of intervention. In that period, uh, one of the um, administration of President Olusegun Gombasanjo, they introduced a policy called Operation Feed the Nation. This was actually a policy that was meant to actually get people back to the farm, creating some incentives, getting them to actually realize that you cannot um, leave agriculture entirely, even though the oil boom is there, we can't afford to leave that space entirely. So secondary schools, educational institutions, there were curriculums built, their curriculums had input from the agricultural space to encourage them to go into farming. We have situations whereby even certain schools, secondary schools, the students have to go to the farm once a week, just to encourage them while they are young to develop that culture of um, in being, having interest in the agricultural space so that we can sustain that um, level of um, production and then being able to still generate foreign earnings from that space. Um, we also had subsequently a green, and what we call the um, Green Revolution by the administration of um, Shehu Shagari and subsequently various other administration um, had a lot of intervention policies, input supplies, seedlings to actually boost yield you have fertilizers, agrochemicals being supplied. Um, later on, we also have support from various governments and non-governmental institutions, um, which led to a um, situation where you have the anchor borrower schemes um, to have a station whereby there is a major anchor borrower who can um, um, support small older farmers and be able to um, aggregate them and get to have a more effective and coercive approach um, to agriculture in the country. Um, I would like to take a quick look at um, agriculture as a percentage of GDP for countries around the, around the world. Um, and this statistics is taken from data.worldbank.org, um, released in 2019. So majorly these averages are for 2018. Um, if you take a look at Nigeria, Nigeria had an average of 21.2% of agriculture as a percentage of its GDP. When you compare that to Mexico, Mexico has about 3.4%. That's quite low compared to um, 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 Nigeria. Um, United Kingdom, however, has 0.6%. United States, 0.9%. Brazil has 4.4% of its agriculture as a percentage of its GDP. Argentina, 61 But if you take a look at the average for the world, it looks as if Mexico is actually on the average. You understand? Mexico did 3.4%, and that's exactly what the world's average um, was as of that, um, as of that period. But if you take a quick, I mean, a, a more than costly look at this statistic, you realize that what happened is that the developing countries tend to have a lot of focus on agriculture. 
So these averages refer to the output from the farms as compared to the entire GDP. So if you have a very huge GDP like the likes of um, United Kingdom and United States, yes, your agriculture may be much more than Nigeria, but then because you have a very large GDP, by the time you take the percentage, it's low. You understand? And that probably also applies to Mexico as well. But more importantly, the more important thing here is that in Nigeria, even though we have this 21.2%, um, it is just majorly from uh, primary cultivation and that. There is not so much of value addition. That is where the United Kingdom, the United States have an edge. So when you actually take a percentage of the food processing and all and the food industry in those countries, it's way, way higher than this because you find a situation in Nigeria whereby we cultivate and produce cocoa and then we export cocoa. Whereas this cocoa could have been gone to, for further processing to produce cocoa powder, cocoa milk, and even chocolate. So you find the exports going to those developed countries and they had they have value additions and the revenues they generated are in multiples of what is generated from developing countries like Nigeria. So there is a huge opportunity in that part of the value chain whereby you can actually go ahead and process the um, primary uh, products which are, are, are being generated by countries like Nigeria. I'll now like us to look at the challenges and um, opportunities in the, in the agricultural space in Nigeria. Primarily, one of the major challenges we have in Nigeria is lack of financing. And um, this is um, not, um, um, this is, um, not um, surprising because most of the banks tend to, or rather all the lending institutions, tend to have a template which is structured after the normal businesses. They do not understand the agricultural model, if, I, mean, I mean, well enough. So they don't build in the seasonalities of various crops various products into the lending uh, models that they avail um, to some of these um, farmers. And as a result, you have some toxic assets in their books and they develop cold feet. They don't want to um, lend to, to, to as much as possible. However, the government is doing a lot. There's been a lot of intervention programs. There's been a lot of um, special schemes being introduced by the government. But if you look at the schemes, you realize that not so much is tapped from these schemes. Primarily, again, because um, some of the um, farmers have knowledge gap. So they're not able to actually assess, they're not able to make themselves attractive enough for the lenders. You understand? That is where the consultants come in to be able to make them um, bankable and be able to assess the financing. Another challenge, of course, apart from lack of financing and knowledge gap, is lack of mechanization. Um, there's still a lot of peasant farming, subsistence farming in Nigeria. Most of the farms that you have, there are various small older farmers, farmers with small land, feeding their families, and also selling some to the market. But this needs to be aggregated where you can use tractors, mechanizations, improved um, seedlings, enhanced um, 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 schemes for fertilizers to actually make sure that yields improve. That is lacking. And um, another challenge is, of course, poor infrastructure. So you find out that most of the farms are located in rural areas. And before they get to the market, they have to go through the roads. Unfortunately, the roads are bad. You understand? So some of the goods before they get to the market, especially livestock, get um, affected. In the same vein, there is not adequate power. Some of the products need um, power supply for you to be able to store them well. Another challenge is the fact that there is poor record keeping. Like I said, most of the farmers are small older farmers who are um, semi-military, so to say, and as such, their record-keeping um, ability is a bit challenged. So aggregate extension is something that will help in this area um, to take care of these challenges. Having mentioned these challenges, there are numerous opportunities, and I will share some of them with us, but these challenges are easily um, overcome. We can easily overcome them, um, like I said. So opportunities are, 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 are very rife in um, mechanized crop production. Um, for instance, there are mechanized farming, producing rice. Nigeria um, is a country whereby we consume rice a lot and wheat. So it is important that if anybody wants to invest, that there's a great opportunity there. There are some large farmers already um, investing in that area. There's also the opportunity in logistics. Like I mentioned earlier on, um, there's some bit of um, challenge 
challenges with regards to moving goods from the rural area to the urban area because of um, poor roads, which leads to about 50% of produce getting destroyed even before they get to the market. In fact, this has been further underscored by recent pandemic, whereby as a result of the lockdown that happened earlier on, a number of farmers could not really easily get their products to the market until they were classified as essential goods and their uh, movement was allowed. But then they're not going to do the movement themselves alone. There are transport companies who want to do the movement and all that. Besides, getting fertilizers, getting chemicals and all that seedlings to the farm was also inhibited. So investment in logistics is an opportunity that um, a good investor should consider. Like I mentioned earlier on, most of our produce uh, sold as they are, rather than being um, processed for that, where you can have much value added, you find out that a cocoa farmer who exports its cocoa or who sells this cocoa outrightly can actually get to process, to process it for that and be able to generate triple or quadruple of the revenues that they generate currently. So there's an opportunity for investors who are able to partner with um, um, farmers or the cocoa producers or other farmers who have primary cultivation and then help them do some value addition to get this product um, better valued. There's an increase in support, increase in support from government, not just government, even non-government organizations. For instance, in Nigeria, Nigeria has over 70% of its land as arable land. And a lot of this is yet to be cultivated. There's huge opportunity and government is giving a lot of incentives, providing um, easy accessibility to land, supporting um, financing, supporting um, uh, um, fertilizer uh, uh, um, supplies and various other forms just to encourage um, the, the growth of this um, agricultural sector. So that is in, an immense opportunity that is available for an investor who is willing to come. Most um, loans in this space are actually priced at um, single rates compared to other commercial loans which are usually in double rates in Nigeria. I will quickly talk about the implications of COVID-19. Like you already know, the COVID-19 is around here with us. It's unlikely to go soon, except um, the vaccine is discovered quickly enough. And um, But we, whether we like it or not, with or without COVID-19, we also need to continue to eat. We need to develop our immune system. Um, one of the things that we realized from the COVID-19 is that the lockdown inhibited sweet movement from the farms to the market like I mentioned earlier on. So there's a huge opportunity here for logistics companies. It is clear that we need to make sure that we are able to um, create an enabling environment for ease of uh, movement from the rural uh, area, especially the farms, to the urban areas and also to the markets. So these are some of the things that we have seen. Um, we need to ensure that it's in place so that farmers are able to get their produce to the market well in good in good um, quality and in good quantity um storage facilities are definitely inadequate and they are seriously required is some of the things that um, this has also shown us because um, we realize that um, you don't necessarily have to rely on um, production in this era if production is um, distorted you should be able to rely on what you have in store um, for instance, um, when the Nigerian government was going to give out palliatives, they had to rely on grains that were in, that had been stored for a number of years. And it's important that some of these grains have to be in good quantity, in good quality. Um, even though some people complained that some of the quality was not good enough, so you have to have the right storage facilities and um, also have the right capacity so that when we have situations like this, because we never can tell, there's been um, in the news that there's a likelihood of a second wave of the pandemic. And if it happens, we should be able to see a station whereby we can rely on what um, we have in stock. And it's also important that aggregation of small older farmers has to happen. We have a lot of small older farmers here and there, numerous in various rural areas, some in the cities, majorly in rural areas, but there is need for cohesion. So if there's synergies, I mean, if there's cohesion, the synergies that will come out of it and there will be more effective performance 
optimal results are increased. Clearly, COVID-19 has also shown us that um, agriculture is not a pastime. Some people tend to want to say, okay, I would like to have a farm. I'm working in a city, but I'm just have a farm as a hobby just to have it there. But it's much more than that. It is a business and we should see it as a business. So there is huge opportunity there. Everybody has seen that, okay, whether you like it or not, something, two things that are very key, food, we need to continue to eat, our health, we need to be weary of our health. So, and then it's when you eat the right food, have the night nutrients, are you able to ensure that you build your immune system and then you can fight COVID-19. So that has um, been clearly um, further underscored and everybody now realizes the fact that there's a huge opportunity in investing in agriculture and we expect to see um, a lot of investment in that space. Okay, so I will now allow Mr. Tosin Ademoiwa um, to speak on um, Nigerian government agricultural policies. Um, this will enable you to actually, as investors, as um, foreign businesses, understand the government's posture and then the government's um, plan for that sector and then what you should be looking at as um, investors, as um, um, people will have interest in investing in the Nigerian agricultural sector. So I'll hand over to Mr. Tosin Ademiwa, who will speak on the Nigerian, Nigerian government agricultural policy and also shed some more light on the agricultural space in Nigeria. Thank you, everyone. Mr. Tosin, you can unmute yourself and then go ahead. No, you are yet to unmute. You need to unmute yourself. You have not unmuted, Mr. Ademewa. Okay. Hello. Can you hear me okay, now? I can hear you now. I can hear you. I don't know if others can hear you. We can hear you now. Yes. Okay. Um, Nigerian government agricultural policy. Now, after several years of neglect, you know, after we discovered oil, we neglected agriculture and there was no development of agriculture for quite a while. Um, several military governments came, the major one, the major operation Feed the Nation, which the military government immediately after, um, a decade after we discovered oil, started several programs on agriculture, operation Feed the Nation and all of that. But they really didn't have impact because a lot of people prefer to invest in oil rather than invest in agriculture, you know? And upon the stabilization of governance, when democratic era became stabilized, the present two administrations back, they started what they called between, from starting from 2011, what they term as the agricultural transformation agenda. You know, um, in the agriculture, we realized that we have a lot of uh, supply and demand gap. You know, a lot of new industries were coming in to practice agriculture, but we also now realize that, yes, there was a demand gap in supply. Um, unfortunately for us, 40% of agricultural production is damaged. A lot of them perish because one, we don't have good logistics for transporting agricultural program. Today, in Nigeria, a lot of farming occupation is still done subsistently. You know, um, let me take tractorization, for example. You still have about 30,000 farmers to one tractor. So tractorization in Nigeria, you know, it became a problem because our agriculture is still largely the subsistence type were not mechanized. And by the test run between 2011 and 2015, by 2016, the government realized, yeah, let's move a bit further. And they changed the agricultural transformation agenda to the agricultural promotion policy. Here, they brought in a lot of people from the private sector, you know, from the, the farmer themselves. Let us sit down and let us retweak this policy. Everybody gave their impute but even at that because of the years of neglect you still have the average age of a farmer in nigeria today is still about 65 65 years you know because agriculture to the young people is not 
um, economically inducing to them. You know, yes, in Nigeria today, you have about, um, in all the universities we have, we have about um, 55 faculties of agriculture. You have four universities of agriculture in Nigeria. A lot of the, the a lot of uh, the information they get from research, there's a break along the line. Some of these research development don't get to the end users. And so government said, okay, let us do a focus so that we close this demand and supply gap between crop production, livestock production, and the end users. And then, you know, with this uh, Vision 2020, the Vision 2020 also has a, an aspect of the wellness, wholesomeness of food and all of that. And so the federal government now intensified uh, intensi intensification of production and processing of staple crops. If we check the FAO, the Food and Agricultural Organization, 45% of all the major agricultural crops in the world, 45% of major agricultural products, which are commercial, from wheat, sesame, soya beans, maize, cocoa, rubber, cashew, oil palm, citrus, gum arabic, sugar, avocado, maize, and all that, they grow in Nigeria. They do very well in Nigeria. Why? Because we have four agroecological zones. Four agroecological zones, you know, with two weather. You either have the rainy season, which is, a, the rainy season runs for a better part of the year from March to November. I will not have the dry season, which is December up to March. So for a, for a long time in the year, you have rainfall for you to carry out um, your agricultural. And so the agricultural policy now went on. What are the staple food? Federal government initially said, okay, let us concentrate on rice because we were like the number two rice importing country in the world. I would say that is a staple food that must not continue so government concentrated on on rice then secondly they concentrated on wheat because now nigeria is nigeria is a little above 200 million and in every household in every household in nigeria every day people must either eat rice or they or they eat bread bread is made from wheat if they don't eat they eat cereals a lot of the cereals are manufactured for maize then you now have what you call the cow pea and then every day, too, the government has started this one egg per day. So livestock, poultry, and all of that, too, we need to also increase the production. So government started with an increase in the production of a lot of these staple foods. And what, 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 what the policy majorly started uh, having the head from 2015, we realized we have to also bring in people from outside to also tell us how they have been successful in their dealings in agriculture. Let's say, I know that Mexico, for example, has a lot of research institutes, some of the best um, soil laboratories and crop um, laboratories are in Mexico. That is lacking in Nigeria. The IITA, the International um, Institute for Tropical Agriculture, is the only institute that helps with um, soil production, uh, soil laboratory. So if you want to do a soil test and I'm staying in the north, that means I have to move my soil to about 1,500 kilometers away to come and test the soil, which is not palatable. That is a very good area. Now, the logistic problem too has to do with our preservation. Tomato, pepper, and all of that, 60% of those production, they end up decaying because farmers don't have preservative, you don't have except like one or two in the whole of this country with a population of 200 million. We have still not adopted um, this technology for food preservation. The cold chain, where you preserve food so that if you harvest, if you harvest your, your, your crop, it does not go to the market immediately. These crops, you can store them for a few months and you take when the supply increases, you know, because here we still follow seasonality. Seasonality is the major um, agricultural system we practice in Nigeria. You know, you have to wait for a season before you eat mango. You have to wait for a season before you, except for orange. Except for orange and plantain. We have come out of all of that throughout the year. And so the government policy, that government said, okay, a lot of this, we have to change 
some of this attitude. Those of you who know the history about Nigeria, Malaysia, Indonesia today, they are the highest producer of oil palm. They took the seedlings away from Nigeria in the 50s. But because of research, because of support from government, today, Malaysia, nobody here in West Africa can beat Malaysia in the production of oil palm. And so today we are, we are number like number four in the production of oil palm. And Malaysia who came to learn from us, they are not number one. So what the government policy, what the government policy now, the GDP, 70% of the workforce in Nigeria today are into agriculture. And if you check, the, why, why does government want to change the policy? As of 2016, you know, you, the historical growth was between six, three to six percent per annum between 2016 and 2018 and government said we also also increase this because agriculture as a 21st quarter of 2016 agriculture share of gdp was 23 percent meanwhile agriculture share of the labor force is 70 percent you know so government created a lot of programs how do we bring in investors you have what is called the anchor borrowers program where government puts money down a single digit for anybody who is ready to engage cooperative farmers if you are doing maize for example the government stands as intermediary between the investor and the maize farmers they give you money to manage it is the the anchor that's why it's called the anchor borrower it is the anchor who gives who takes the money from government and who now monitors the enterprise you know, so for small business owners in Nigeria, if you don't have the money, you don't have, um, normally when you get money from bank, they will ask you to present um, a collateral. A peasant farmer who does not even have a survey plan or doesn't have a paper for his land may not be able to get some of those land. So, so you as a company, if you have a company or you, you want to invest into a company and you say, okay, how do I get supply, regular supply? Government helps you. With the process that is called the anchor borrowers program and that policy has helped us in the area of rice production today in the world today nigeria is the eighth largest country that's producing rice and that started that process started like six years ago and is beginning to show food now and government is not extending it to maize government is extending it to cocoa cocoa for example um the western part of nigeria was developed in the 50s just from the sales of produce cocoa but when we discover oil we let cocoa go and today Cote d'Ivoire is beating nigeria to cocoa production and in the whole of africa nigeria ghana and Cote d'Ivoire are the largest producer of cocoa all over the world yet they make they just get one percent out of the value chain they don't get money from the chocolate they don't get money from the butter they don't get money from the cocoa milk and all of that and government is trying to bring investors instead of us selling some of these things out raw okay come here we'll give you incentives come and establish this factory and when you say establish government gives tax holiday because there must be a moratorium if you are doing agriculture your money doesn't just come back and some of this policy today is beginning to show you know but majorly as it is today mechanization opportunities in farm mechanization a lot of our agriculture is subsistence today we don't even have an assembly plant that assembles mechanized equipment like tractors and all of that all the tractors are still imported government is open for anybody who is ready to come you bring in these tractors government stands as guarantor and by the time you give to farmers we will also increase our level if you look at um, um uh, livestock for example there's if you there's always problem between the livestock farmers or the Fulani headers because they still bring livestock from the north. The southern part of Nigeria has more rain than the northern part, and because of that, realistically you have to bring these animals. But now you have improved varieties in all over the world that are that are resistant to trypanosomiasis and that are resistant to pneumonia. It is because the, the cattle we have around here are still no resistance to all of that. That's why you still have to bring in some of the animals they bring from Nigeria, coming from Central African Republic, from Niger, 
these are animals that are two years old and are very tough when eating you know so if you look at all those statistics that you know it, now in the area of livestock it's today except for poultry when you talk about poultry it is only in poultry that will have a little edge but even in poultry the rate of production you know per population size per one egg per day is still very deficient in poultry production because we still don't have um we still don't have very good breeds that can stand you know the weather that can do well without plenty of the drugs that you give now the whole world is going organic and as we speak to you organic is the biggest opportunity that i have in nigeria you still don't have plenty of farmers who do organics you know because the technology the know-how for organic farming is still lacking within nigeria and out of in agriculture crop production gives is 80 percent as we speak in nigeria 80 percent if you look at the total production in agriculture crop production different kinds of crop they make up 80 percent of agricultural production livestock poultry um, sheep cattle uh, sheep and goat makes up 15 percent you know because of the but, but because of the protein intake that is required the a huge opportunity is still waiting in the area of livestock production for improved varieties that can we, we, we just withstand trypanosomiasis and, and pneumonia that is one area you have a lot of ranches that government land that government has preserved for people who are ready to come and open ranches here and they lease the ranches to you and you, when you do this production with the in a state very close to us they kill about 12,000 cattle every day to feed the population that is just one state out of the tax six states that you have in nigeria so if you if you prorate it with the 200 million population there's a huge opportunity also in that area because we are beginning to realize now with the climate change that you have that oil in future oil earnings with window except we we'll go back to nature except we we'll go back to our ecosystem all of us will suffer you know so those are some of the incentives that the government has it is an open door policy now for most state government some states will give you land free of charge in nigeria if you're ready to do agri agriculture some states will say we give you land for so so amount of years and let us see what you do if you use it very well yes we can improve upon it you know so uh to, in order to also add into the opportunities that my friend uh, added uh, my friend uh, femi talked about lack of financing lack of mechanization yes today if you go to the university you are either exposed to who and cutlass you know we still don't have a lot of farms that are under that are irrigated because irrigation irrigation equipment are so very very expensive you know um the knowledge gap is also huge today um people plant when you look at them um, let me take maize for example in a in a in a, in the united states of america which where i experienced where I, I did a little experience why we still make like four tons per hectare between four to six tons per hectare on maize production in the united states in nebraska for example they were making 11 tons per hectare why because the seeds the input that we still use are sub quality and government allows importation of improved seedlings they allow importation of improved seedlings from if it's meant for planting yes they allow them to bring it in that is another idea for for investment then there's also this standardization i've seen um in the in europe where you move produce from one place to the other here we still move produce with baskets and that brings about the perishability of some of these things you have I, I can i see collapsible crates organized collapsible crates and all of that that they use in bringing use in transporting produce that's a huge opportunity for anybody who is ready to come into the production of that uh, you know those kind of equipment for transporting produce from one place to the another so that we are, the way we transport them here where we stack them on top one another they compress you know and the ones that you have at the bottom they get spoiled they are compressed they are broken and all of that they, they get scratches and when they are exposed fungal infection comes in 
you know, and there's problem. That standardization is still very lacking in Nigeria. Majority of the rice that we produce here, we still harvest by hand. We still don't have like the big combined harvesters, the, as, as big as this country is, we don't have, we don't have more than 10 combined harvesters for a population of 200 million. That's another opportunity for rice production. Now that we're producing rice, you know, we are producing rice now, we are rising and all of that. But if anybody comes with some of this equipment for lease, for example, if you don't want to do total buy-off, a lot of the farmers who are into this enterprise will come to you for solutions on their farm. You know, and across the value chain, the major problem we still have, our value chain development is still very, very, very poor. We, we sell cassava just like that. We sell cocoa just like that. We sell cashew. I know those who do organics now, they use cashew milk. If you don't want to take cattle milk, you do cashew milk. But we still sell our cashew whole. And if you have investors who want to come into value chain, it's a whole lot of opportunity. Because I know across each of the crops, you have a lot of value chains. And those value chains, because of the absence of equipment, because of the absence of um, innovative technologies, we are still underdeveloped in that area. So um, let, me, let me just stop there in case we have questions from the audience. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ademoiwa. Um, I know it's a, it's a very vast topic. Um, if we want to speak on this, it can actually take us a whole day, um, but I know we're, we're short of time. So we'll just conclude and then we will um, see if we can take questions from the audience. Like um, my friend Tosi mentioned, there is huge opportunity in the value chain in agriculture in Nigeria. Um, just like uh, we mentioned, in the cocoa space, we can see um, the immense value available in that opportunity, in that value chain, if we're able to process via investors. And I think the world just needs to, com to come together. Um, there needs, there's need for collaboration. Nigeria has got the Haribo land to do the cultivation. There are con con countries that have got the tractors, the mechanized equipment. There are countries that have got the technology. So we just need to come around, come together, and then build that synergy that will ensure that the global um, food chain is kept alive and um, the opportunities are just very immense. I know, like um, Mr. Dossi mentioned, there are some technology developments in uh, Mexico, especially with regards to the um, laboratories that he mentioned and all that. So if we're able to come together, um, get this done, we'll just be leveraging on this um, um, advantages of each other and then be able to generate a lot of um, revenue. So what I will advise is that um, it's important that um, if you want to come around, aside from the information that we've shared here, you can always um, reach out to consultants like us or some other consultants or even some government agencies to find out information um, that will be helpful for you to actually make a meaningful inroad. So I just like to stop here so that we can create um, enough time. I know Alma is already um, itching that we should stop. I guess we're already passing our time. So we'll just stop here so that in case there are questions and then we can then take them. So thank you once again okay. for having us. And then we'd like to have questions if there are any. Okay. Right. Mr. Uh, well, Femi and Mr. Ademiwa. Uh, what is the right pronunciation, Olufemi? Because uh, it's Ademi, Ademiwa. You can just go for Tosi. Tosi may be easier. <laughs> tosi. Just say Tosi. tosi. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Tosi. Tosi, yes. <laughs> Mr. Tosi, thank you very much for all the information. Really, yeah, I am... Okay. So happy to receive all this information from you guys from the government because it's, it's really, really important. I think as Femi says, it's, it's a, um, a conversation for a big, big uh, uh, topic and it's a big topic and you have a lot of opportunities there. So I'm, I'm really glad that Femi, you invited him. Thank you for, for your time and your participation. And I'm sure we are going to invite you guys again because this is not going to be the, the only one um, at, at the moment we have a very short time to just to discuss the last the last information and some of the questions that the audience have but i just really wanted to the, to let you guys know that this topic is very interesting for 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 mexico as well because as you guys said the um, uh, there are a lot of opportunities you mentioned them many of them uh, they have uh, mexican companies they have the possibility to invest 
uh, but also to to import and export from Mexico, not just uh, established there, but probably also uh, doing some exports. And you were mentioning, Mr. Tosin, uh, about these facilities that the government is giving to the Mexican companies. So specifically, uh, in uh, do you know how many companies are established in in, Me in, in Nigeria? in terms of agricultural industry? Um, they are not up to 10. Okay. Because I, 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 there's, there's, a, there's a person, um, I think he's, uh, he, he, he calls himself uh, a, one of the ambassadors of the Comse. Uh, I don't know if I pronounce it well. There's a team in Mexico mm -hmm. that he, he works with, is in Nigeria, is trying to bring in some uh, Mexican investor Okay. into nigeria yes to come and do also do investment and i think the government of Oshun state in nigeria has given them about five thousand hectares of land to work or to work on okay you know? and um i think it's for if not for covid 19 um the, the they've met with the state government uh, i think covid 19 has is uh, what is um disturbing um the the success and the conclusion of the investment but they, because they heard of the opportunity in Nigeria too, they decided to come to Nigeria and, you know, um, they, they've, they've spoken with government and they, they, they've indicated um, their intention to, um, to go into a lot of um, enterprises in agriculture. So I think that's, uh, that is one uh, company that I know for now. And then you have uh, about two or three of them in Is it connection? La conexión está. Project um, mistake or something. You know, I think they are for majorly from Mexico. Sorry, I cannot hear. Femi, uh, uh, there's another question. It's about your opinion and what is the most important product to invest in Nigeria? Sorry, I didn't hear that. Uh, it depends. We have. What's the most important um, uh, uh, crop to invest in Nigeria? I think today the major political crop in Nigeria today is rice, oil palm, and cocoa. Okay. Yes, if you if if your investors are coming to Nigeria to do rice, they will get a lot of attention. You know, because rice is the staple food in Nigeria. Every family eats rice a day. And if you look at the population of uh, 200 million, if they have to eat rice, we consume a lot of rice. So rice majorly now, government is giving a lot of incentive for rice production as we speak in Nigeria. And the benefits that you guys as, as government um, give to the foreign companies is not just about land, it's also about taxes and, and other benefits. The, uh, what kind of benefits that you guys provide? Oh, yes, you know, when, when, you are, yeah, when, you are, when you are when you are going into when you are going to agriculture, there's what you call a moratorium. You know, agriculture is not something you go into and you start collecting tax. You know, and Mr. Femi is a very good uh, uh, finance um, expert in that area. So majorly, there are a lot of taxes that are waived. You know, until your uh, your 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 product stabilizes before you be asked to pay taxes. So some states, they give you land, um, depending on what you want to do. If they look at your, the, the area where you can get a lot of uh, interest from government, make sure that in your program, you have a lot of CSR, corporate social responsibility. As long as you, you have included a lot of surface, uh, corporate social responsibility in your project, where you take care of the community, you know, you know, so government will not have to come again and start taking care of the community because of that enterprise in that area governments gives a lot of incentive tax waivers and all of that for for that enterprise okay
Another thing I would just quickly like to add is the fact that, um, I mean, typically investors, when they bring in their money, they want to be sure that um, they will always uh, be able to also take it out easily. Um, that you can easily do by virtue of your certificate of capital importation, which will be given to you once you bring in investment. Another thing, of course, of concern to investors is the regarding um, the valuation of the currency. So there's a particular scheme introduced by the CBN, align investors when you bring your money, you can hedge it so there are forwards that are available to you to actually take out the funds, you understand, at certain rates. So because people will look at it that, okay, if I bring in money, there might be devaluation, I just currency is probably devaluing fast. Okay, what is the um, incentive for me? So there are incentives in terms of forwards that you can actually um, sign for um, at the time you bring in your, your, your funds and then you can take it out at that same exchange rate so you don't lose value just to okay. have that as part of and the incentives. Another question you were mentioning about the organic products that are very common mm -hmm. now and people buy. So are Nari Nigerian people buying these products at the moment? Oh yes. There's a there's there's there's, there's an awareness for wellness now for buying eating wholesome food. So you have a lot of Nigerians now who are going into organic food production. You know, they yeah. want to know where the food is coming from. So those ones, they go to stores that produce, you know, there's a big store here called the ShopRite. I think this, this, the, 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 the company is from originally from South Africa. They have a section where you can go for, you know, organic uh, purchases. Then, you know, in the high... Uh, class areas in Nigeria, like the capital and Lagos, you know, that's where you have the high world people. You have a lot of these stores springing up now because they know that there's a high demand for organic food production. You know, so yes, you have a lot of awareness now for organic food consumption. Okay. Well, we would like to know more about that. Probably we will invite you again. Unfortunately, the time is, is gone. But yes. it's very, very interesting, this information. And also, in, in my case, uh, uh, yeah, uh, probably Femi, you will invite him again when we talk about this, these things because um, we try to get more interest about, uh, uh, yeah, for people to export and import. And I think mm -hmm. that Nigeria is uh, one of the, well, right now I see the, the, one of the countries to be there at uh, this moment also of mm. the pandemic. Mm. So, Femi, I don't know if you guys also... No problem, Hama. No problem. Do you want to add something just to conclude? And, yeah, thank you for your participation. Do you want okay, to add Okay, thank something? you very much, uh, Hama. Mm. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, thank you, everyone, for having us. Um, I just want to assure you that um, um, cultural space in Nigeria has immense opportunity, like already highlighted, and I uh, will be happy, very happy to have you come around and do business. Uh, we'll be willing to hold you um, as consultants. We'll be able to give you a good landing. Um, the various schemes available from the government and incentives are something that we'll be able to share with you, and then you can take advantage of it. So we're we'll very glad to assist you. If anybody needs further information, you can drop us an email. Our email is available there. Um, um, this is the email for the Attitude Consulting. Uh, if there's any information you require uh, from Nigeria or in the agriculture aspects, we'll be glad to give it to you. Thank you. Ok, pues muchas gracias a todos por su participación, espero que les haya eh, sido de utilidad. Como vieron, eh, Nigeria tiene varios productos como el coco, este, el maíz, el arroz que ellos consumen diariamente y pues tienen en este momento la necesidad porque no tienen infraestructura, porque no tienen este, el, el área de, de almacenamiento, porque no tienen tractores, porque no tienen laboratorios en donde puedan este, tener más este, posibilidades de, de mantener la, la, la producción y la comida más tiempo. Entonces, si, eh, si hay personas en la audiencia que tienen este tipo de, de, de producción o, o hay, tienen la posibilidad de, de proveer estos productos, como dijo el señor Tassin del gobierno de, de Nigeria, ellos como gobierno están en la mejor posibilidad de apoyar a todas las empresas mexicanas y de todo el mundo que quiera invertir en agricultura. Hay personas, como decía Mr. Tosin, que eh, han ido ahí, les dan eh, varias eh, bueno, tierras para establecerse, para producirlas, 
les dan facilidades en, cu en cuestión de, este, de incentivos monetarios, financieros también. Lo que quieren ellos realmente es primero cubrir eh, en este momento la demanda de arroz y de, la demanda eh, de todo el, el corte que ellos necesitan, de toda la comida que necesitan para la, la, la gente en este momento que no nada más es, es término de negocio, sino es también para la producción local, para la producción de, de ellos mismos. Entonces, es, si tienen alguna pregunta, por favor, a través de Concanaco, contáctenos. Vamos a traer más eh, eh, de este tipo de, de seminarios, los cuales son beneficiosos también para México si quieren importar o, o exportar. Entonces, gracias, ya no les quito más su tiempo, espero haya sido de, este, de beneficio este webinar. Eh, gracias, Concanaco, por el apoyo a esta transmisión al área de, 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 de tecnología. Saraí, muchas gracias y pues estoy para servirles. Muchas gracias, Alma. Pues damos por finalizado.